Breaking tonight, the NHS has announced it is shutting down the Tavistock Centre, the UK's only gender identity clinic for children, after it was found to be rushing under-18s into gender reassignment treatment. A bombshell report revealed the clinic is not safe and that other mental health issues have been, quote, overshadowed once children treated there raised the issue of gender. From next spring, it will be replaced by regional centres at existing children's hospitals that will seek to offer more holistic care and a broader range of doctors. The decision follows the high-profile case of Kara Bell, who under the care of the Tavistock Centre was prescribed puberty blockers at the age of 16, but later changed her mind about her decision to transition to male. Kara then became a crucial whistleblower after she pursued a judicial review to stop other kids repeating her mistake. The High Court initially ruled in favour of Kara in the landmark case and NHS England uh, immediately declared that under 16s would not receive blockers without a court order or that decision was overturned in September last year. The closure of Tavistock today means that in the end, Kara really has won in her defence of vulnerable children. I spoke to Kara on the show recently and having learned from her own harrowing ordeal, she made the case against transitioning full stop. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I firmly believe that uh, gender dysphoria is a symptom of 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 deeper things going on. Wow. Um, I mean, yeah, it's as it's as simple as that, really. I mean, uh, there's no such thing as being born in the wrong body. Um, so, yeah, I, it's it's quite shocking to me when I look back and none of the adults really uh, noticed that or or cared. In a disturbingly similar story, Rishi Heron is now suing the NHS over claims he was pressured as an adult into receiving surgery to remove his genitals. Rishi no longer identifies as a trans woman and he firmly believes that the clinics need to be more thorough in their assessments before encouraging life-changing surgeries. And I'm delighted to say that Richie joins me now alongside the executive director of Sex Matters, Maya Forstatter. And Richie, I'm going to talk about your story in just a moment. But first, Maya, can you just set up what this decision today actually means? Because it's something that folk like you have been battling for uh, for a long time. Yes, it's it's good news. Um, This comes after... uh, the the report of Dr. Hilary Cass, who's a paediatrician who was asked by the NHS to review um, what's what's been going on at the Tavistock following all of the whistleblowers. Um, And her her research is still ongoing, but she has said it's it's not safe um, and the care that it's that it's giving is not based on on sound research. And so what she's called for is for more localised care, care that focuses on children's mental health and that doesn't just push them onto a pathway to transition. Um, And so it's as a result of her interim findings that they're now closing down the Tavistock and planning to open um, a series of uh, more local centres where children will... um, be assessed in terms of uh, what you know what's really going on with them rather than seeing gender as being the only answer no indeed and and richie your personal story is utterly harrowing you are now suing the nhs because you went through the gender reassignment it's essentially ruined your life hasn't it and you don't feel that there were the right checks and balances in place to make sure that you were mentally ready for the huge physical transition that you were put through. That's right, Dan, and thank you very much for having me on to to tell my story. Um, The thing was, is I actually told them basically everything that was going on, and despite that, I still got went through. So to me, it, it seemed kind of redundant to go through all that, to tell them absolutely everything to go through this intense process of therapy and i didn't i didn't get caught by the safeguards and i'm not alone in this and that's one of the reasons why the tavistock is closing down um and also i would imagine that this will be extended to the other gender clinics but an important point to note is i feel the move towards the regional centers was something that was going to happen anyway because they have quite a lot of people to deal with. Now, what we don't want is we don't want this 
to just open the doors to anyone. We want to make sure that all the safeguards get put in appropriately, not just for children, but for adults too. Because the consequences of this surgery, Richie, I mean, it is truly life-saving. I know you've been very open about this and you now describe the transition as the biggest mistake of your life. Uh, I believe you've been left infertile, incontinent and in ongoing pain as well. So this is going to have massive ramifications. Yeah, that's right, Dan. And the thing was, is as I was going through the lead up to that process, I had a lot of red flags that weren't addressed. Um, and even taking that to the side, the conversation about the longevity and the procedure itself, how it works, what does it look like when the results are good? What do the results look like when they're bad? None of that happened and it should have. Now, I'm sure other people who go through this process may have a better level of care. But to me and other people who have had a lot of these similar issues, it doesn't seem to be the standard. It seems to be potluck. And yeah, something and, like this should not be potluck. And can I just clarify, Richie, you, you say now that actually post-surgery you've realised that what you were really battling with was your sexuality rather than right. your gender. Yeah. Um, and I think I'm not alone in this. No. Uh, the Tavistock report came out to say that a lot of gay kids were, were going through the transition process. Um, and obviously I wasn't a child when I went through, I was an adult, but it does impact vulnerable adults too, because the issues that you're faced with, like internalised homophobia as a child, will yeah. be there with you when you're an adult. That's not going to go away yeah. by itself. And Maya, this is the huge issue, isn't it? Teenagers, the hormones are running rampant. People are trying to work out what their sexuality is. And, and, and lots of kids, lots of teenagers, you know, I've been there who are thinking, am I gay, am I lesbian, are being pushed into life-changing, horrible surgery. And yes, and, and hormones don't just change your body. You know, it's puberty that... Um mature you know that's how a child's mind matures so children are being asked to make a decision which will affect the whole of the rest of their life before their brain is ready to make that kind of decision and then puberty blockers stops their brain from from developing that maturity that that was that's a really big issue um and the jids uh the tavistock um started this uh process of of giving hundreds and thousands of children puberty blockers before there was research to show whether it was reversible and what it does to children's minds and their bodies. Um, and it was it was one of our uh, directors of Sex Matters, Dr. Michael Biggs, who pushed uh, the Tavistock to release that data. They had the data and they weren't releasing it. They were saying, oh, yes, this works. It's reversible. Uh, this is the answer, when in fact, when, you, when they looked at the, the children they'd been giving this to, the girls were less um, happy. Their gender yep. dysphoria was not going away. It was not solving the problem. Um, and, it, you know, it was creating the problem. No, indeed. Indeed. Well, look, number one, and I don't use this word lightly, both of you are incredibly brave. We want to keep having this discussion with you because there's so much still to unravel. So, Richie Heron, thank you so much for being on the show for the first time. And Maya Forsatter, the Director of Sex Matters, always a pleasure to speak to you. Of course, we get both sides of the story here on GB News. And regarding Richie's case, in a statement, the Cumbria, Northumberland, Tyne and Weir NHS Foundation Trust said... It could not comment on an individual trust, on an individual case, sorry, but added care plans are collaborative and tailored to each patient's needs and goals and treatment decisions are made following a thorough assessment in line with national recommendations.